the international race to build the definitive city of the future continues. The newest candidate is one from Kenya, and it costs trillions. Kenya's big future city project is called Kanza Technopolis. Before we get into the specifics, here's the basic sales pitch. African Silicon Savanna. All the wealth, innovation, and jobs Silicon Valley in California is known for moved all the way over to Kenya, specifically to an area of around 5,000 acres, 64 kilometers south of Nairobi. That's not an easy thing to do at all. All that effort translates into some big costs. Reports go as high as 1.2 trillion Kenyan shillings, which is quite the ask. To put it in perspective, that 1.2 Kenyan trill translates to 15 billion dollars. Though they hope that will pay them back big time. They hope to bring in a community of around 200,000. The area will also attract 17,000 new jobs in new industries built from the ground up. Overall, they want it to generate 1.3 billion in gross regional product, or GRP. As far as the people go, they want the citizens to earn 400 million in annual wages. That is just growth, growth, and growth. With these future cities, the most important thing is the look. People have trouble digesting all of these facts, figures, and gigantic numbers in the constant need for setbacks. What people have an easy time digesting are beautiful images of the city that look like they're right out of Star Trek. While many city designs highlight tourism, shopping, beachside properties, or the biggest neon skyscrapers you've ever seen in your life, Kanza shows off big time universities, affordable apartment buildings, and skyscrapers that are flashy, yes, but look more like they make for good workspaces than penthouse apartments that go for like $5 million. It really paints a vision for the city's future that's not just flash and style, but a great foundation for the city's people to sustainably grow for generations to come. Yeah, that's a lot easier to visualize than $15 billion. So what is the real point behind this city? I mean, sure, those of us in the West are probably thinking of the fictional Marvel City of Wakanda from Black Panther that's full of flying cars, vibranium armor, and a ton of African artwork everywhere. The real plan is much less of a Marvel movie and much more of a sound business plan that could revitalize the entire nation. They are not just hoping to build a city that looks great for tourists and citizens alike. What the city really hopes to do is impress businesses in other countries. What that means is outsourcing. Outsourcing is when a company hires workers from another country for cheaper labor costs. While that sounds exploitive, and it totally is, it also is a major jobs producer around the globe. Take India, for example, perhaps the country that is most synonymous with outsourcing. India has made a huge amount of money off of outsourcing projects, such as call centers, back office operations, and many, many more business ventures. That number is 23.6 billion dollars a year, and it's growing more and more annually. Kanza looks to build a ton of office spaces, call centers, and much more to bring some of that business to Africa. While that might not sound awesome to you, you gotta think big picture. Sure, some of those outsourcing jobs may not be the most glamorous, but the city is also looking to build universities and learning centers to train people to do that work. In a few generations, they may not be making calls for foreign corporations, but foreign corporations might be making calls for companies born in Kenya. Never discount the value of education. Like many of these future city development projects, the Technopolis is advertising itself as a quote, smart city. Basically, a smart city is one that uses information and communication technology to improve the city's efficiency and to improve the lives of its citizens. More specifically for Konza, 
It is a pretty great master plan. It wants to effectively integrate infrastructure services like transportation, utilities, public safety, and environmental concerns. And then there's the citizen services, such as their access and participation in the city, city services like city information planning and development, and business services, such as supportive services for local commerce. What this all translates into is that they will collect all of this data through the most convenient source possible, all of their citizens' phones. Yes, they intend to use smart devices and urban environment sensors, such as ones in roadways, buildings, and other structures that will be collecting information constantly in an effort to optimize every aspect of the city. A lot of countries have made similar announcements, but the problem is the cost of implementing something this massive. This has become more than a $41 trillion industry worldwide, with few cities actually having the results they promised. While master plans and smarter cities sound great, you're gonna have to build these cities for them to actually be smarter. So these designs may be lofty, yes, but they aren't a reality just yet. We've talked about the dreams and visions around this future city, but how about some hard truths? Anyone who follows these future city and green city and smart city projects knows that there are always big promises and bigger setbacks. As far as the Kanza Technopolis is concerned, to many, this is being viewed as a failed promise. If you were to view the proposed spot for Kenyan City of the future, you'd see a whole lot of nothing. In fact, you could easily drive right through the development without ever seeing anything even resembling a city. That's because despite a ton of interest and a huge dump of cash, very little has actually been accomplished. Seriously, the only building you can see for miles of any size is the Kanza Technopolis Development Authority, or KOTDA, which is mostly just maintaining the land at the moment. Due to legal and logistical problems left and right, everything was pretty much left in park instead of drive until 2013. Now it seems as though this, along with many other promises made along with the Technopolis, will never, ever come to light. This entire project is only a small part of the quest to remake Kenya entirely. That quest goes by the name Kenya Vision 2030. The entire thing was launched in October of 2006 for the development time period of 2008 to 2030. While the country has made great strides towards achieving its goals, international turmoil such as the pandemic is constantly threatening this dream. With any luck, the nation might just achieve everything it wanted to, even if it gets here quite a bit late. As far as futuristic cyberpunk cities go, this one certainly looks like the nicest. Just straight out all of the cybernetic implants with affordable college education. Not a bad future at all. 